Today uh, I'd like to talk about animal behavior or the study of ethology. And ethology, um, one of the main items with ethology is always trying to be objective. So if you come home and the dog waggles its tail and jumps at you, you might say, ah, the dog likes me. But that's not objective. Yeah? You can't anthropomorphize. So no anthropomorphizing. And that's a very neat word for a hangman. If you ever play hangman, yeah, remember the word anthropomorphizing. So you can't put your mind onto the dog or into the dog and, and you have no idea if the dog really likes you or not. So you're not allowed to do that. Often what you have to do in the study of ethology or when you study animal behavior is first you have to make an ethogram. You look at your dog and you will come up with all the behavior types that your dog does. So one of the types is what I mentioned just uh, just now, is to waggle its tail. So one of, one of the behavior types in your ethogram is waggle the tail. Um, after you make the list yeah, and you have completed your ethogram, you could have as many as 20, 30, 40 items in there. You start doing your actual research and you start to build a protocol. So basically what you do then, and it's often done in a pair or a threesome, is you try to get what is the frequency of certain types. So when does your dog waggle its tail? And what most of the time happens is someone keeps track of time and you uh, watch the dog and say, okay, now he waggles its tail. And someone writes down, okay, tail waggling. And it takes place for a certain amount of time. And then maybe it uh, starts licking itself. Okay, licking itself. So after you've completed this, and that can take up quite some time, you can make a conclusion and you can tell something about the animal behavior and hopefully it's more in depth than the dog likes me. Now, for behavior, yeah, you need a stimulus. A stimulus results in behavior and yet the stimulus, prikkel, the stimulus could be internal, like your stomach, your stomach growls or is empty and it gives a sign to your brain that I experience hunger, feelings of hunger. And then you might show a certain behavior, yeah? like for instance, you go to a shop to buy a candy bar, or maybe uh, you're a healthy person and you buy yourself an apple. It could be external, yeah? sight, you see someone and you say, hey, I know you. Okay, so internal and external, external stimuli lead, can lead to certain type of behavior. Now, we have certain different stimuli. A key stimuli always has the same behavior. Um, for example, in, um, in some birds, when the mother uh, hangs over the nest, it, on the bill is a red spot. Chicks in the nest will always pick at the red spot, no matter, yeah, no matter what happens. Bill with red spot does actually not need to be her, their own mother, but if there is a bill with a red spot, the chicks will pick at it. Um, that leads to the same behavior every time, over and over and over again. And this can lead to a fixed action pattern on both sides. Red spot, sighted, chicks peck at it. What does the bird do? It's sort of regurgitating food for the chicks. Yeah? So you see that one behavior type um, is a stimulus for the next, and that's a fixed action pattern. Um, so we have a certain response here, if this is your if this is uh, uh, if this is the line of response, we can actually we can actually artificially we can um, fiddle with this because if instead of the bird with the bill with the red spot, we take a, a piece of cardboard and paint the whole cardboard red, we hang that over the nest. What we see is that response is far bigger than the actual bill. So this works much better than an actual bill from. A bird. So we have a response here in my, in my small little graph that is higher than the actual natural response. So we say this is a super, a super stimulus. It's a super stimulus. So it's something often unnatural. Um, that's something that researchers, ethologists came across. Um, now we're talking about behavior and we're talking about what causes certain behavior. But we need to get a sort of a feeling of what types of behavior are there. On one end of the spectrum, there's innate behavior. 
innate behavior is behavior that is always there. As soon as a chick comes out of an egg, it starts pecking at that red spot. That's innate behavior. So they are born with it. Chicks are not actually born, but okay. Um, on, the other, on the other side of the spectrum is learned behavior. Yeah, so actually what you're doing now, you're picking up new information that's learning. Huh? And uh, that's the other side of the spectrum. You learn something new. It's, it wasn't there yet. Okay, now, and there are certain types yeah, of behavior that have a place in this range, either to the right-hand side, to the learned side of the spectrum, or, or to the innate side of the spectrum. For instance, this fixed action pattern is quite innate. Yeah, it's all the way to the left-hand side for you. Instinct yeah, is an innate behavior type. Imprinting is a type of learned behavior, but it, it's only seconds. As soon as the, uh, the egg breaks open, the chick comes out. In a matter of seconds, that chick decides, not voluntarily of course, decides that whoever hangs over the nest is his mother yeah, or a parent. So if you find yourself, yeah, if you find um, a bird's nest and you wait for the eggs to break open um, and they see you, the chicks will see you the very first time, they have imprinted that their parent is going to be you and they will follow you for the rest of their life. And that has happened with, for example, which is also mentioned in your reader, uh, Lawrence, who did that with geese. And he went all over the place and his flock of geese followed him the whole time. Um, conditioning. We have two types of conditioning and one type you might get the Pavlov reflex. Yeah, and we'll study that in detail a bit further as well. On the far right side, on the learned side of the spectrum, is insight. And insight is something that only very few animals and us humans will do. So insight means you can solve a puzzle. And this puzzle could be a literal a puzzle, but also um, if you hang up a banana in a cage from a chimpanzee and you put some boxes on the floor, eventually this chimpanzee will decide, hey, if I stack these boxes, I can jump on the boxes and then I can get to the banana. And that's something that insight is. Yeah? So um, chimpanzees, dolphins, crows, yeah? there's a few bird species. It's only, it's most of the time it's, <coughs> it's higher organisms that show learned behavior in that, yeah? in that amount, insight. A quick overview of what we're uh, going to do this uh, chapter, animal behavior. It's very fun because we'll be looking at animals lots. So uh, look on uh, YouTube. There's uh, there's a number of videos yeah, of animal behavior and of certain types of behavior. So um, remember to use YouTube for your uh, for your uh, learning on biology. Um, yeah, this session. Enjoy.